Welcome back to Pregnancy and Birth Diaries. Today we'll be talking about one of the most essential topics for all the expecting mothers out there, nutrition and diet. Pregnancy is the time when our body's nutritional needs are very much increased because of hormonal changes, the strain on our bodies and the requirements of the baby's development. So what should you eat when you are pregnant? information provided in this video is purely my opinion, the way I see things. I'm not a doctor or an expert uh, in medicine or nutrition. Always consult with your doctor or a registered dietitian before making any changes to your diet, especially during pregnancy. First, let's understand why exactly nutrition is so vital during pregnancy. When we are pregnant and have deficiency in a specific vitamin or mineral, it can have consequences because our body has the incredible responsibility of not only nourishing itself, but also supporting the growth and development of the growing baby. And to make this happen, a range of essential nutrients, including vitamins and minerals, are required. If for any reason our body falls short of these vital nutrients, it can lead to various complications. For example, a deficiency in folic acid, which is a B vitamin, can result in neural tube defects and other birth abnormalities. Folic acid is super important for early fetal development. And also if you don't have enough calcium intake. It may impact the baby's bone development, um, while insufficient iron can lead to anemia in both the mother and the baby. So the food that we eat directly impacts our baby's growth, brain development, and overall health. It also plays a very important role in our well-being, not only during these critical nine months, but also afterwards. Having said that, I myself was not able to eat properly for five months out of my whole nine months pregnancy due to severe nausea. The only time it went away was when I was asleep. As soon as I woke up, it was back. So. I could not eat or drink. I barely ate maybe some crackers, maybe rice and very blunt food. And I was thirsty the whole time. I couldn't keep any uh, liquid down. The same happened during my second pregnancy, but we're fine. My kids were born healthy. We're all okay. But obviously sometimes the consequences are not so easy to pinpoint. So if you're not like me and can keep your food down, then this video might be interesting for you. Okay, now let's talk about some of the key nutrients that I think should be a part of daily pregnancy diet. First of all, I would make sure to have protein in every meal I ate to support my baby's growth. For example, I would regularly eat beef, not just lean meat, but with its fat, eggs, definitely. I would eat from time to time salmon and I would also eat dairy products. Uh, however, I think you should not eat meat and dairy products at the same time because there might be absorption issues. For protein, I would also eat different butters, nut butters, hazelnut butter or peanut butter. And if I'm eating, let's say, peanut butter that is much higher in omega-6 fatty acids, I would also take omega-3 supplements to balance it out. Now, let's not forget about bowel movement because you don't want to be uh, having constipation when you are pregnant. So make sure to have enough fiber in your diet. I would personally go for boiled broccoli, just five minutes in low heat and uh, cauliflower, 20 minutes low heat as well. Also try to get organic, just in case, if you can. And please read the labels of every product that comes in packaging. I don't want to go into that rabbit hole, but just use your common sense. Okay, now let's talk about vitamins. Number one for me would be folate. It's crucial for preventing neural tube defects in the baby. Um, as I have mentioned before, foods rich in folate are leafy greens, asparagus, avocado, and liver. I myself took folate supplements, uh, folic acid tablets, first trimester of my pregnancy and two months before conception. Number two is iron. It helps 
to transport oxygen to your uh, baby and prevents anemia. So I would get that from meats, liver, dark leafy grains, not those whitish leafy things that come in hamburger, but like spinach, kale, Swiss chard, arugula. But if you are already having low iron levels, eating iron rich food might not be that helpful because such diet is good for maintenance purposes and might not necessarily help with increasing its level. Of course, stick to iron rich diet, but make sure to do a blood test and consult with your doctor to see if you need iron supplements or infusion. I myself couldn't take any iron supplements orally, but I got shots and they really did help. But I wouldn't recommend I wouldn't recommend the shots. Infusions are much better, but talk to your doctor and see what the guidance is. I would also eat calcium rich foods for strong bones and teas, aim for dairy products and leafy greens. Um, healthy fats are also important. And in my opinion, healthy fats are extra virgin olive oil, butter, avocado, and also ghee butter. For deep frying at high temp temperatures, I would use tallow or coconut oil. Okay, now, what should you avoid during pregnancy? I'm going to make a separate video about that, but in short, raw and undercooked food, especially seafood and eggs, I wouldn't drink coffee. But of course, if you really want to and have to, talk to your doctor and see what he or she says. And no alcohol and smoking. We used to have beer and wine on weekends. We stopped doing that a couple of months before conception just to make sure that our body is in good health. I know that we cannot prepare our body to be in ideal condition for pregnancy and birth. It's not possible to have everything perfect for conception. There are things you cannot control like air pollution sure you can use air filters go to countryside on weekends but you cannot stop breathing the same with water you don't have much control over how much plastic particles you are taking in with water yes you can use water filters drink bottled water but you have no clue how much plastic is going in there are many examples like that but there are things that we can do there are things that we have control over like no alcohol no smoking and having limited caffeine intake even before pregnancy exercising especially if you have office jobs and i think we should concentrate on what we have power over and not worry too much about things that are outside of our control Meal planning, I think, can make it easier to ensure you're getting the nutrients you need. So maybe make a list or some sort of a table on Excel sheet and kind of have an overview of what you are eating. And it also is good for your grocery shopping list. Let's not forget about pregnancy cravings. I think it's okay to indulge occasionally, but I would try to find healthier options like fruit instead of candy. In my last trimester of my second pregnancy, I had a crazy craving for milk chocolate covered raisins, which is crazy because I normally never eat those, nor do I even want them, but I just really couldn't stop myself from eating those. And I think I ate too much that my urine test that week showed sugar and my doctor was afraid that I might have um, gestational diabetes. But, I, but thank God I didn't have it. But I had a scare because that would have um, prevented me from giving birth at the hospital that I had um, chosen because they don't accept women with this condition for childbirth. Okay, now moving on, let's talk about vitamins and supplements. Unfortunately, nowadays, even with a balanced diet, I would personally take prenatal vitamins because our soils are not rich in nutrients anymore. So even if you eat lots of nutrient rich foods, you might not get enough. So consult with your doctor to see which vitamins and supplements you should be taking. I must admit during my first pregnancy, I was stubborn and kind of stupid. And I thought that vitamins are not gonna make much of a difference. And I took none, but now I know better because as I have mentioned, pregnancy increases our body's nutritional requirement our body needs to support both our body and our growing baby so I think it's important to give our body enough nutrients to meet the increased demand 
but of course keep in mind that every pregnancy is unique so make sure to consult with your doctor or a registered dietitian for guidance all right that is it for today i wish all the expecting mothers out there a safe and joyful pregnancy